an employee because guess what? I had to do all those ethics trainings. They're not hard. If you pay my salary, if you're a taxpayer and you pay my salary, that's the minimum I can do for you. Do an ethics training. Anyway. So I'm so happy to be here speaking on behalf of Indivisible Austin. I've seen so many t-shirts today. Thank you. Um, so our organization resists authoritarianism and defends democracy. Seems like something we need today, right? So why do we do this? Because we have an administration that seems really, really, I don't know, confident that it can use unchecked executive power. We can't have an authoritarian as the President of the United States. It's not going to happen. The other thing we have is a Congress that suddenly has amnesia about its oversight responsibility and its role in defending our democratic institutions. No way! So, our prior speakers today have done a really amazing job of highlighting why we need to demand the President's taxes. I'm going to enumerate a couple of them for you here. Transparency. Yeah. Foreign entanglements. Yes. Russia. Yeah. And how so-called tax reform will directly benefit the president and his family members. I have a problem with the term tax reform. We'll talk about that in a minute. But. I want to talk a little bit about why we need to focus on our members of Congress. The Indivisible Movement organized with the idea that we need to hold our members of Congress accountable. And one of the things that they need to do is oversight. Are they doing it? No! So, we live in one of the most gerrymandered cities in the country. How many members of Congress represent the Austin area? Anybody know? All right, I see five, I see four, six. Six. We have six members of Congress representing all of these people out here. I know some of y'all came from Dallas, so okay, there's more. But we are so highly gerrymandered. So when it comes time to keeping our members of Congress accountable, we got to make a lot of phone calls, y'all. We have a lot of people that we need to hold accountable. And we need to ask them one question. Are you going to do your job? Are you going to do your job? So let's do a little roll call here right now. How many of you are in Representative Michael McCall's district, Texas 10? What are you going to ask him to do when you call him on Monday? Yeah. Do your job! By the way, he hasn't really said anything about these tax returns. How many of you are in Bill Flores' district, Texas 17? What are you going to do on Monday? What are you going to ask him? Do your job! Really, what are you going to tell him? Lamar Smith? I know there are a lot of people here from Texas 21. What are you going to tell him Monday? Do your job. All right, we got to go through a couple more here. Roger Williams, Texas 25. What has he said about the tax returns? He won't show up. Crickets. So what are you going to tell him Monday? Do your job. All right, John Carter. Far north part of our area here. What's he said about tax returns? Nothing. What are you going to tell him on Monday? Do your job! All right, so we have one more representative who covers the Austin area. Representative Lloyd Doggett. Representative Doggett, but some of us remember the good old days, right, when, when we were, when Austin was not so gerrymandered, when as a community we had representation in Congress. Representative Doggett is on the Tax Committee of the Ways and Means Committee. What do you think he does every day? His job! So he has worked really hard to get these tax returns released. 
and he has just hit a brick wall every single time he's tried. On February 27th, all of those other members of Congress that I mentioned voted to refuse to demand that the IRS release the tax returns. They have the power of oversight. It's like on November 9th, they woke up and said, oh, wait, is that a thing we do anymore? What are you going to tell them on Monday? Do the job! They work for us! That's right, they work for us. So, what can you do besides saying, do your job? You can call Representative Doggett's office, even if you're not one of his constituents, and let him know that you thank, the, thank him for the work that he's been doing to get these tax returns for you. the good fight about it. He is the vice chair of the tax committee. He is a powerful Democrat in Congress. And Ways and Means, the tax committee, they're the ones who are going to be responsible for so-called tax reform. They're the ones who potentially are going to pass changes that may directly benefit the president and his family members because we don't know what's in those tax returns. So I encourage every single one of you to, to figure out, if you don't know already, who your member of Congress is. Put their phone number in your speed dial. Call them every day. Ask them, tell them to do your job. So I just have three things that I want you to ask your member of Congress when you call, after you tell them to do your job. Three things I want you to ask them to do. Ask them if it is okay for the president to use the office for personal financial gain. Ask them. If they say yes, I want to hear about it. <laughs> Tweet it. Uh, ask them if it's okay to change the tax code to potentially directly personally benefit the president and his family members. And lastly, ask them if it's okay to hide the truth of whatever is in the president's tax returns from United States taxpayers. Is that okay? No! So, I just want to close by saying we need to, to come together. We have come together. I think we're actually doing a really great job of it. But we need to keep doing it. We need to keep the heat on our members of Congress. We need to demand that they defend democratic institutions and traditions. These things did not end on November 9th, right? Together, we have power. And let us bring our power to focus on our members of Congress and tell them to do one damn thing. Do your job! Thank you!